The Bombardier Beetle, which may not be the strongest or the fastest of its kind, has an invincible defense mechanism that has intrigued scientists for years. New research on its unique way of protecting itself may now provide information useful in the design of propulsion systems. Eric Arndt, a PhD student and member of the research team at Ortiz Laboratory at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, is studying these beetles. He joins us now to tell us more. So what do these beetles do in a nutshell? Well, these beetles are, are quite remarkable in that they initiate explosions inside of their bodies to produce a hot chemical spray for defense. How do the beetles survive the explosion and the crazy chemicals? It turns out that the, the material these glands are made out of, which is cuticle, which is what all insect exoskeleton is made out of, is very good at resisting chemicals. And while it's not yet clear the specific adaptations that allow it to survive the chemical and the thermal nature of the threat, it is, um, it's an exciting area for, for further research. Okay, so you saw this happen how? We used an X-ray source called a synchrotron, which is a particle accelerator designed for, for making ultra bright X-ray beams. And we placed the beetle in the synchrotron and watched using X-rays what happens inside the explosion glands when the beetle sprays. And these beetles, this particular type of bombardier beetle, or these 500 and so species out of the 1,400 species of bombardier beetle, the spray comes out as a series of pulses as opposed to a continuous stream. Each time the beetle sprays, it's 10 or 20 explosions in a row, very fast, 500, frame, 500 times a second or up to 1,000 times a second. Each one of those explosions, you see the, the reactants that are the fuel for the explosion come into the reaction chamber, explode, and part of the reaction chamber deforms. Mm -hmm. It deforms quite a lot. Um, and, and we see this as the vapor exceeding the, the natural sh shape of the reaction chamber. Um, and so this expansion of the reaction chamber happens right where the valve that controls the flow of fuel in. Yeah. And so this expansion causes the valve to close, and which temporarily halts the flow of reactants. And when the pressure drops, it, the valve reopens, more reactants come in, explosion. And, this is, and again, this is how it happens as a pulse. Thousands of times a second. Up to, uh, from our measurements, between 300 and 1,000 times per second. There's some variability from beetle to beetle. 300 to 1,000 times a second, there are these explosions happening inside a beetle that cause a chemical spray yep. to shoot out. Okay, so now you figure that out, what do you do with that? The real profound takeaway is, this beetle is using chemical energy to do work. The work being the kinetic energy of the spray traveling out and hitting, the, hitting its prey, or a predator rather. It's using a single part to do this. When we use an engine to convert chemical energy, you know, gasoline and, and oxygen gas into work, it's hundreds of parts. And they're all very precise and put in very specific places and made up of very specific materials. The beetle is doing this with one part, which is its pagidial gland, and it's able to get this complicated dynamics, this complicated fluid flow, essentially, by controlling the material properties of the gland with very, very high spatial resolution. So the expansion membrane is this thin, flexible membrane. The re reaction chamber is mostly this stiff material. The reservoir, which holds the fuel, is a, is a, a flexible sac. And so looking towards design, we would, as material scientists would very much like to be able to do this. So what happens with the findings that you've come to now? What are the types of industries that could produce technologies or devices that would impact us in our daily lives? So I, I think, you know, aerospace and, and biomedical are certainly gonna, it's gonna garner a lot of interest in those areas. But I, I, I wanna emphasize, there's still a lot of fundamental work to be done. Insects, turned out, are very, very good material scientists. And they, you know, if you look at the material that the glands are made out of, cuticle, mm -hmm. which is also the material the exoskeleton's made out of, Insects tune the mechanical properties of cuticle over eight orders of magnitude. Something, you know, it being softer than skin to being as hard as teeth. Um, using just very tiny modifications in the chemical, mm -hmm. chemical composition. Um, as material science, we would love to be able to do this. And there's lots of people working very hard to figure out how to do this, but we're not there yet. Mm -hmm. And so just studying these kind of fundamental systems has the possibility of opening up all kinds of doors in all kinds of industries. And so this, and this beetle has no predators because it's so effective with this chemical spray? Well, it turns out that uh, some animals have, have c developed clever strategies for defeating the beetle. For example, certain spiders, if the beetle wanders into their web, the spider will be very gently turn the beetle, wrapping it with silk without causing it to spray. And then when it, the spider bites the beetle and injects its venom, the beetle sprays, but the silk contains the spray. <laughs> 
Another example is uh, blue jays will pick up the beetle with their beak and rub it against their feathers. And the beetle sprays many, many, many times with the feathers protect the bird. And then when the beetle can't spray anymore, which is after like 20 or 30 sprays, then the, the bird eats the beetle. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Eric Arndt. No one knows more about beetles than you, but thank you very much for joining us. Well, thank you very much.